If I told you you could build your own business earning $100,000 a year or more that was location independent, job independent, doing something you loved with minimal startup costs, would you believe it? And what if I said that it didn't include any sort of like multi-level marketing or anything like that? Does it sound too good to be true? Well, it is not, and I have a study to back it up. There was a recent study done by thetilt.com where it looked at 1,400 content entrepreneurs or content creators and examined things like how much they earned, how long it took to start their business, whether they were full-time or part-time, their demographics, the type of videos they did, lots of useful information to come out with some findings. And I think that some of those outcomes are going to surprise you, but even more, I think it's going to encourage you that you can create the lifestyle that you want, doing it how you want, completely independent. It's not only possible, but people like you from all different walks of life, ages, socioeconomic status, anywhere in the world, all you're really going to need is probably things that you already have and reliable internet. Hey everybody, I'm Wendy. We're so glad you're here. We're all about helping moms and dads on the road to financial independence, save more, spend less, build wealth, and doing it all while living a joy-filled life. I am super, super, super to share this study with you guys today. I was kind of in a little bit of a funk over the last week and I was watching a Think Media podcast and they talked about this study and it just took me right out of that funk because, you know, doing YouTube videos and and trying to create content and, you know, you have this comparison mindset a lot looking at other people and thinking, well, why are they, you know, growing at this rate and I'm not? And it can be rough and it can be very, very discouraging. Then sometimes you just want to question everything you're doing and throw in the hat. I was watching that video and just the things that it talked about was so encouraging and it made me feel so much better about our own journey and what we're doing with this channel because of the timeframes involved. But not just that, it was the potential. And as long as there is the potential to do something, give me the instructions, give me the steps, and I'm all in. So I'm hoping that what I'm about to share with you today will encourage you as well. All right, so let's get into the study. It was a study of about 1,400 content entrepreneurs or content creators. So people like me who are are on on YouTube and putting content out there and creating videos around that content. Now, this was the first thing that I thought was super, super surprising, but also so encouraging to me as a 50-year-old mom. (laughs) If I were to have asked the question, what does the typical um, YouTuber content creator look like? In my mind, I pictured someone who is probably more like my daughter, who's a um, younger and on the millennials and my my oldest son, who is a Gen Zer. But that's actually not the case. The largest group of people who are doing content creation and building it and building it or having it as a business is Gen X. And that's me. That is individuals in their 40s and 50s, which I thought was super, super encouraging. And boomers. Boomers are in the game too. 23% of content entrepreneurs are boomers. And likewise, the millennials, the boomers and the millennials are always duking it out. They're at 23% as well. And then the the smallest are, are up and coming Gen Zers who are probably going to take over the world. But Right now, as far as content creation goes, they're 5%. But what that tells me is that it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, there is an audience out there for you. You just have to get on it and produce the content. Somebody out there wants to hear what you have to say. The other thing I think that those statistics show is that it doesn't take a viral video to produce success or income on YouTube. You don't need to be going out after the viral videos. Slow and steady wins the race. As long as you are improving, as long as you are putting valuable content out there that is a service or helpful to other people, you will grow an audience, which you 
can turn into a business. In this study, they looked at both full-time and part-time content creators, and it was split fairly evenly. 48% were part-time creators and 52% were full-time creators. The interesting thing about that, though, is that those who were content entrepreneurs full-time were seven times more likely to create income that could financially sustain at least one person. So not only one person, but sometimes more than one person. So what that tells me is that at some point, if you are looking at content creation as a business, that at some point you are going to have to be all in. When I was leaving my law practice, I didn't just jump ship. There were several things that I did to prepare to be able to leave my practice. And at the time, I was the breadwinner. I was earning multiple six six figures, but those six figures were servicing basically all of our debt and our lifestyle. So the first thing that we did was we pared down our lifestyle significantly. We cut our expenses by over $10,000. We did a bunch of other things. We paid off debt. We downsized our house so that that gave us some um, more room in our budget for our living expenses. Um, But what I'm trying to show here is that if you want to be able to be a content creator full time, you have to create the runway for yourself to do that. So that means that you're going to have to pare down what your outgo is or and or have the savings to be able to support you for the time frame that you need to do it. You can't always work it as a side hustle or a side gig. It may start out that way, but if you truly want it to be a business, it is something that at some point you, you're going to want to jump in full time. Now you might be wondering what in the world would I have to talk about? Well, another interesting statistic from this study was that the topic of contents was very wide. There wasn't one specific area that had a a hold on the topics. The top three industries were business, which um, 19% uh, were business, 16% were educational, and then 11% were educational. So like my channel, even though it's personal finance, it's considered educational. And then the remaining were spread out in smaller percentages of other things like lifestyle, um, health and fitness, that kind of thing. Um, But what that tells me is that it really doesn't matter what it is that you want to come and create content about, it will fit into one of those categories. All you really need to do is look at what you know or a skill that you have. I'm seeing very successful stations that are for homeschooling moms. I've seen plumbers. I've seen mechanics. I've seen dentists. There is a woman who does um, dual immersion or um, English as a second language. And I saw her at the beginning of the pandemic. She started a Spanish education channel for little kids. And I saw her when she wasn't getting any views. And now she's getting thousands and thousands of views every single week. And I just think that that is so wonderful that anyone can turn anything as long as you're providing um, just something beneficial to other people. There are people that are going to consume it. No matter what stage the content creator was in, 80% of people felt that this was something that they wanted to do and the priority for them was independence. So not just, we're not talking about just money. We're talking about job independence, lifestyle independence, being able to work however long you want, whatever hours you want, the time of day you want, the setting that you want, the location in on the planet that you want. And it's really about freedom and being able to choose. It's not that you're working any less or that you're working any harder. You're just simply doing it in a way that makes sense for you and your family. And that was what drove me. Uh, I was um, a solo practitioner as an attorney for a reason. And that is because I enjoyed working for myself. I wanted to be the one making the decisions. I wanted to be the one 
to decide if I wanted to go home early that day or if I needed to work until nine o'clock at night that I could. Um, but then it just got to be too much, especially when we got our boys. And so uh, once we got our boys, I really was looking for that laptop lifestyle. And in fact, that term right there is the one thing that drove me to find the financial independence community is that I wanted independence. And likewise, nine out of 10 were building their own content entrepreneur business because they wanted financial independence on their own terms, which I love it. I love that so much. I love being able to say, I'm going to earn money for my family, but I'm doing it in a way that I want right now. I am not putting off my lifestyle for five or 10 years down the future. I am creating this business and building this business so that we can live the life that we want to live right now. And even if I wasn't able to do it right now, the time frame for being able to create a successful online business is relatively short and significantly shorter than a traditional um, small business. And we'll talk about those numbers in just a second. Another interesting fact is that of the creators, they spent only about 30% of their time in the actual content creation. So sitting down and doing the videos, going out and filming, um, you know, B-roll or going out and searching for B-roll. The other 70% of the time was on business building activities, which as any business owner, you know that that is important. You need to be you know, researching how to bring people to your channel. You need to be looking at different ways that you can, uh, build money into your, your business and how to grow it most efficiently, how you can scale your business. There's all this back and behind the scenes stuff that happens. And because when you go into this, you are viewing it as a business. So you're not just viewing it as a hobby. You're viewing it as a business. Those things are important too. And so if you want to be successful as a content entrepreneur, you're going to have to be able to think about those things. Now, let me just say this as a business owner and someone who has had um, other businesses being in business for yourself is not for everyone. It just simply isn't. And that's okay. If you get into this and you decide that the business part of it is just not for you, it is absolutely 100% okay to be on YouTube and just have it be your hobby. Um, what Who I'm speaking to is the people who want to have this as a business. And so part of that, of course, is having a business mindset. Learn what you need to learn about business. Read profit first so that you know how to allocate allocate your funds so that you're earning or you're keeping profit, not taking profit out of the left leftovers. You're actually taking your profit first. Uh, surround yourself with like-minded individuals who uh, have business sense, who can mentor you. And if you don't have those people in your life, there is a wide world web out there where you can find just about anybody. Read, listen to podcasts. You can do that if, if you have the desire and the will to learn. All right, let's get to the stuff that is the nitty gritty stuff. How long is this going to take me and how much can I earn? Well, you have to be patient because it's typically not going to happen just in the first couple of months. In fact, it took from launch to nine months to for the average content entrepreneur to earn their first dollar. And then from there, from nine months to 18 months is what it took to hire help or, or hire out for people to assist you. That's not necessarily full-time help. Maybe you're hiring out someone to do your editing for you. Maybe you're hiring someone out to do your thumbnails, but it took about 18 months to be able to do that. And then it took just a little over two years, 26 months to be able to support at least one person. Now in the big picture, 26 months is nothing. And when compared to the typical small business, it's a lot less. So to be able to create a business in about two years is pretty, pretty awesome. We are at about um, a year, year and a half on this channel of serious work. Um, and we were monetized in September. So um, we're a little behind that medium, but I did take a four month break off in um, April. Um, I took some mental health time. So 
I'm catching up from that. If I take that out of the picture, I'm pretty much on target, which is exciting. You might be wondering, well, what type of monetization actually makes you the most money? Because there's multiple ways to do that. And the interesting finding of this study that there wasn't one um, sort of monetization strategy that took the majority. It was spread out between all of the ideas, but the top two were online courses and education, which was for 16%, that was their most profitable method. And then the second most profitable method was advertising. So like YouTube, um, AdSense, that sort of thing. And that was at 13%. The median income for people who were successfully supporting themselves full-time was $50,000. Now that's just overall on average. Now for those people who stuck it out for four years, those people were earning a median income of $100,000. And if we push that out just a little bit longer, people who are really committed to their channel and working it for the long haul at seven years or more, the average was $125,000 a year, which to me is amazing. Even at $50,000, that is a really great income, especially for certain areas of the country. That's more than some people make, make in education. It's more than some people make doing a lot of things. I know that when I started at the public defender's office, granted that was about 16 years ago, but when I started at the public defender's office, I started at $42,000 a year. So being able to do something on your own terms and earn $50,000 at it is not too bad. And with the potential after working it for about four years to earn $100,000, I think that's fantastic. And that just gets me super, super excited. All right. So let's just talk about the, the final point. I want to talk about this study. They found four things that were common to the most successful content entrepreneurs. Number one was they work their business full time. Number two was that they're a patient. They weren't just looking for the viral hit. They were committed to doing the work and doing it for <laughs> over two years. The third thing was they use their own channel and content as opposed to using an intermediary. So let's say, um, you know, you're getting most of your traffic from, from Facebook. Well, Facebook is not the primary source and you don't own anything. Facebook can shut things down in a heartbeat. If that was where all of your, your traffic was coming from, that's a problem because once that's gone, then you have to figure out a way to get that traffic from somewhere else. And then the fourth thing was they have a business mindset. So those were all things that we talked about, um, the commonalities that were, were found in this study. And here's the fantastic things. Those are all things that you can do right now. Those are all skills that you can have and use right now. So think about what you want for your life. Are you willing to put in the time? Are you willing to put in the effort? Are you willing to maybe do some of the work, like cutting your expenses and making a savings account so that it can get you through this runway time that you need to build this business so that you can create your dream life now. If you're willing to do it, go for it. Start, make a plan and just start executing. Treat it as a business, commit the time to grow it, start creating and work on it as a business full-time, not as a hobby. Guys, I hope that this was super encouraging to you. I, it was super encouraging to me. I was super excited at basically everything that came out of this study. And as I said, I'm going to link it down below so you can look at it yourself. It's not a long read. It's in a PDF and it's got some um, graphics and stuff to hold your attention. So it's, it's a good study to take a look at. I'll link that down below. So glad you were here. Please come back if you haven't subscribed, would you please do so? And we will see you back here next week. Take care, guys. Bye.